Well, we're about to see an exciting transformation take place here at the University of Laverne. Back in about 1970, the Board of Trustees looked at the needs of this institution and said, we need more space. We need to accommodate a variety of activities. We looked at building traditional buildings to fill those needs. And as usual, our needs were far larger than the money we had available to build the buildings. And so Lee Newcomer, who was president at that time, and I was assistant to Lee Newcomer, said to me, there's got to be a more creative way to build the space that we need for the University of Laverne. And he had some friends back at the Ford Foundation, and they had an educational facilities laboratory, and he said, I bet they'll give us a planning grant to look for a more creative way to fill the needs that we have for space. And sure enough, they did, and we hired a very creative architect by the name of John Shaver. And this building behind us was actually sketched out on a cocktail napkin. We weren't drinking at that time at the University of Laverne, but we were in a cocktail lounge and he had a cocktail napkin and he sketched out this building on that cocktail napkin. And he said, we'll cover it with woven fiberglass covered with Teflon. And I said, newcomer, you've gone too far this time. <laughs> and we created the super tense and it was really the vision and the creativity and the forward-looking nature of Lee Newcomer that made all of this possible. And Lee is with us today, sitting right down here, ladies and gentlemen, the former president of the University of Laverne, Lee Newcomer. Well, as this building came to be, he and I looked at each other and said, I, I don't know about this. We're creating a building. They don't know how long it will last. They've never built a building like this. They've never used this fabric before for anything but frying pans. We don't know what it will do. And we looked at each other and said, oh, it's going to last 20 or 30 years, and what do we care? We won't be here anyway. <laughs> well, be careful what you say. We're about to perform a transformation on this facility 30 years later and turn it into a marvelous sports science and athletics pavilion and the construction has already started. So we'll see this building transformed. Right over here where the old shower and locker room is, we'll see a marvelous new campus center that will become the family room for the University of Laverne, where we gather together at all times of the day and night, and that will be the Sarah and Michael Abraham Campus Center. And right out in this area, we'll have a marvelous plaza that makes a much more attractive entrance to all three of our facilities, the Daily Theater, this pavilion behind us, and the new campus center. So it is a great day. This area is the area that we, we really wanted to start from uh, because this is the area that's going to have the elevator and the central stairwell and restrooms on the second floor that we're going to create. And in each of the uh, open areas of the tents, we're going to be building a mezzanine uh, which will enable us to enclose uh, the area underneath the mezzanine in classrooms, offices, storage, you name it, uh, and then build on the second level more offices and whatever, classrooms, uh, restrooms, that give us the opportunity to then maximize the volume of this building and, and, and actually increase the square footage within the building by more than 25%. The whole notion of this has been to gain, gain square footage, but um, if you'll notice, the tents have become tired. Uh, there are aspects of them that, that weren't efficient. Uh, the seams in the insulation are starting to fail, which uh, becomes very unsightly and a very difficult problem to solve. And one of the things we're going to be doing uh, in this project is give, give the insulation of facelift as well.
And so that, that when you're on the second floor and looking up at the peaks of the tents, um, you're going to see a, a very new and clean surface, something that's going to look very attractive and is going to add to the impression of the building. You're also going to see the old uh, abandoned lighting uh, that's up in the peaks there which was high pressure sodium fixtures, which was always a joy when you came in the building because the lights made everything look orange. <laughs> um, those are gonna be eliminated, as are the sprinkler system because the sprinkler system is going to be revamped. So uh, all of that goes away. Even some of the insulation at the peaks of the tents will go away to provide daylighting, nat natural light, uh, like we have on the sides over here. So you'll, you'll have more ambient lighting, a more natural lighting situation, and a more energy efficient building. there'll be a mezzanine constructed out in this open area again. Um, this will be the uh, exercise area. So all the, the weight training equipment uh, and uh, the uh, aerobics, uh, the uh, exercycles, all of that are going to be relocated to this space. And it'll be a large open area with the exception of the columns, the posts that hold up the mezzanine. Um, it, it, it's floor level, it, it will be at about 10, uh, 10 feet high because its floor level will meet the gym floor level. That's daylighting, that's areas where, 
where the insulation's been cut away. And uh, we're gonna do some of that up in the peaks to provide na natural lighting for all of the space above. But these will provide some light into uh, the first floor area that, that obviously will you know, be more enclosed. Again, it, it will add uh, more than 25% uh, to the square footage of the building. What you see now, all of this gets dem demoed out. So it, none of this will be here and we'll have all brand new mezzanine and, and enclosure of space. Uh, these modular units will all be dismantled. Uh, some of them will be gone forever. We're looking to possibly incorporate uh, the newer modulars into space up on top of the mezzanines temporarily until we get into the final build out of the building. So. And again, the, uh, the mezzanine will come out almost over to the light area? Yes. This whole area will again be covered. This will become a um, storage equipment area, uh, the area ultimately for the laundry, for uh, cleaning of all the athletic equipment, cost, uh, athletic uh, uniforms, all of that. And um, it'll be primarily devoted to storage. Uh, these buildings go as well. Yes. Uh, yeah. This used to be our TV lab, and now it's human performance lab. Right, for athletics. All of this goes. Yes. Now we're walking around to the south side of the tents. Which used to be the workout area. Yes, and uh, aerobics before that. And um, it will become classroom and office space. It's looking good, Kurt. <laughs> Again, this area is going to be have a mezzanine built out over it, and what will be housed in here will be uh, two large classrooms that will be towards the hallway space, and then wrapping around the, the periphery or perimeter of the uh, building will be office space, and this will be for the, the movement and sports science program. So it's, it's the academic uh, area. Uh, of the athletics functions. The footings for uh, the columns, actually they, they've started to do layout but, but they haven't done it all yet, but there are some very considera considerably large footings that have to go in place uh, to uh, place the columns and support the columns. And uh, you can see here that they just uh, struck a, a center line for, for this particular uh, open area of the tents. Right here where the brick wall meets the drywall. And then if you look in that open space, you can see the gym floor is exposed. So that's going to be the height. At, that's going to be floor level for the mezzanine.
will be a drop ceiling space, you know, uh -huh. for for uh, all your ducting and yeah. electrical, all that. The building will be given a, a central purpose rather than being trying to be something for a lot of different uses that didn't necessarily mix well. And uh, it, in its new configuration, it's going to be devoted to athletics and, and academics in, in movement and sports science. So there won't be these conflicts that have arisen over the years about usage and who's doing what in the building. And, and understand too that it's not just the interior of the building we're talking about, that, um, that over the course of the summer, a large part of the, the, stu the uh, campus center plaza will be being built. And so when people come back uh, in September, at the beginning of school, they're going to be, I think, very pleasantly surprised with uh, the appearance and the approach to uh, this building and Daly Theater. And a pleasant environment with uh, gradual ramps down to the uh, in main entrances, and it's going to make such a big difference, you know, in people's ability just if they run into each other to say, hey, let's sit down and talk and enjoy the day out there. So. Absolutely. Should transcend, uh, set the benchmark for the future. Yep. Yeah. This is a good beginning on the benchmark for the future for the University of Montana. It's an exciting time. last huh that's right at last <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely great to have them on oh!